I'd like to show you three techniques that you as a teacher can use that'll really help improve the tone of your clarinet students. Now there are some techniques that might take quite a long time to master, but these three are all actually quite instant improvements for your students and it's really handy to know about them. There's some common bad habits students fall into and if you know what to look for, you're really going to find it can make a difference in the students that you work with. So one of them is simply the angle that the clarinet makes with the head. And it's very common, especially for beginning students, they like to look down and see what their fingers are doing when they're learning. And I see a lot of beginning students who will fall into this as a habit, and then they keep that habit in the years to come. And it causes all kinds of trouble. And I'm going to show you how this can make a difference. If I'm looking down, it interferes with the way the air flows through the instrument, and we really hear it in the tone. I'm just going to play an open G, the, the nickname for the note when all the holes are open, with my head up, and then I'm going to move my head down, and you'll listen to the difference in the tone as I do that. Now in that register, which is where a lot of your beginners play, we just hear it as a little bit of fuzz. If I were to take that into the high register, so your players in their second and third year, we hear a much more dramatic difference. Let's listen to that. So my pitch goes all over the place, my tone gets really wild, and that's the angle of my head. So the first thing you want to look for as a teacher is to see if your students have their chin down. And what I say to my students is just if they were to look at me and say, hello, hello, that's where we want their chin to be. It's very, what you'll see with these students is that they will put their head down the moment the clarinet goes in their mouth. So it's something you can watch. And a great way to work with this is have your students pair up with each other if you have a class of students and have them take a cell phone photo from the side. And really they get a chance to see what they actually look like when they're playing. Now there's another part of angle that is a factor in tone, and it's similar, it does relate to how the clarinet fits, but that's the angle we choose to hold our clarinet at. And there isn't a perfect angle, it's not like it's 37.28 degrees, it will be different from student to student, but each student I find has a range where it's going to sound at its best, and you can help them discover that. With most students, if their head is up, it's going to be near the end of their knees or maybe just inside of it. And what you can do if they're comfortable playing a high note, that high C that I was demonstrating, the thumb and register key, is a great tester note because it's a really reactive note. If they're younger, they can just do it on an open G, which all clarinetists can play. But what you can do is have them start with their clarinet pulled in as far as they can. And this is going to be too far. The reed's going to be hitting the chin. And then just slowly hold it out and you listen to the sound. And the students themselves are usually smart enough to recognize where they sound at their best. I'll demonstrate on a high C because it's more noticeable and you can hear the changes it makes. So I'm keeping my head in the same position. That's what's important here. You're having them only move the clarinet. And of course, eventually I lose it. Now here's the thing, when I had it out here, obviously I lost sound and it didn't sound good, and you would notice if a student was doing that. But keep in mind, if they're playing with their head down, which is not so noticeable, their clarinet at a normal angle, if I were to lift it up, it's as if I'm holding it out here, and some students do that. So that's one thing you can watch for with your students, and really, if you get them with their head up, clarinet at the right angle, instantly their high notes are more in tune and the tone is more focused and more regular. The next thing you can look for that can make an instant difference is how much mouthpiece the student has in their mouth. This one is something that a lot of people don't know about and it can make a huge difference to their sound. Also to how easily the high notes come out. If you have a student who's kind of wimping out in the high register, this can make a big difference. So most people don't have enough mouthpiece in their mouth. And because we want the reed to vibrate as much as it can, the more mouthpiece we have, the more the reed is free to vibrate. If you have someone who just has a teeny bit of mouthpiece in their mouth, they're only letting the very tip of the reed vibrate, and they're limiting how much sound and tone they can get. Again, it's a very easy test. You can have them do it on an open G. I have them play a note with just a tiny bit of mouthpiece, and then put in a bit more, put in a bit more, 
And what you'll generally find is the tone gets better and better until there's kind of an invisible line on the mouthpiece, and I sort of call it the squeak point, where you cross it and you get a horrible squeak. So you know you've gone too far. And our goal is to get really close to that squeak point. So I'm going to keep my embouchure and air more or less exactly the same and only change the amount of mouthpiece I have, and you'll hear how that changes my sound. So it's very clear when I went too far, what you hear is that I get more sound and more resonance each time. And it's a really fun exercise for the kids to do because when they get to the squeak point, it's very obvious. So it's nice for them to kind of figure out how this works. Now the third thing that you should know as a teacher to watch for is if your student is playing on the correct reed strength. And we have another video that goes into that in detail, which you can watch, but I'm going to give you just a quick summary for this video. Many students play on a reed that's too soft. It's because they started as a beginner on maybe a two, maybe even a one and a half, although I recommend a two for your beginners. And as they get more air speed going and more strength in their embouchure, they actually will sound better on a stronger reed. So my rough guideline is as soon as you have a player playing in the high register, they should be on at least a two and a half. And when they start playing from a high G on up, for most clarinet players, a three and up is better. It depends on their mouthpiece and gear, so I'm just giving you rough guidelines. But here's a clue if your student might be on a reed that's too soft, and it's, you're going to notice it in the high register. If you have a student who really sounds loud and squawky and their high notes don't even come out, a lot of times it's the reed, and it's so nice if you can solve it just by giving them the proper reed strength. So I'm going to do a demonstration that's not going to sound good, I'm warning you in advance, but this is what a reed that's too soft would sound like, and if you want to test for your students, what I have them do is tongue a C major scale in the high register, and those high notes in many cases won't even speak if their reed's too wimpy. So here's me as a young student on a reed that's way too soft. And I'm sure you recognize that sound. It's very common. So we get that low undertone there. That's a sign that the tone doesn't have enough support. Support comes from our air, it comes from the reed, it comes from many things. But when it's the reed that's the problem, it's so nice to fix it. What you can do as a little test for your students is have them move their reed a little bit higher on the mouthpiece than they normally would. So I would put the tip a millimeter or so above the top of the mouthpiece. Now you have to warn them this is going to feel hard to blow and it's going to make their tone a little airy and fuzzy. So this isn't a fix, it's more like a test. If you do that and then they try hitting those higher notes, and they come out, even if it sounds airy and fuzzy, that's a sure sign that that student needs to be on a stiffer reed. So those are three things that really make a dramatic difference very quickly for a student. Checking the angle of the clarinet, checking if they have enough mouthpiece in their mouth, and if they have a stiff enough reed for the best sound. Those are three things that I really recommend you get familiar with and try them out with your own students.